in what they now describe are, are populations of concentrated disadvantage, people that have lived in conditions, in these adverse conditions of, of generational poverty um, that has not changed, and, and concurrent with that are environmental conditions of violence. Uh, that includes family violence. It includes um, environmental conditions like something as, as uh, basic as lead exposure that we're all aware about now and what the effects, lack of access to, to health care. All of these combined adverse conditions create a, a um, just sort of a toxic stew that uh, results in uh, disproportionate contacts with, with law enforcement over a period of time. And it also creates you know, addiction issues and trauma, post-traumatic stress issues. It's the police's job to, to respond to all those and to magically fix them all and, and put those individuals into the court system and expect that, that uh, an adversarial court system is going to be able to, to deal with, with uh, you know, kids that, that are in desperate need of a lot of resources and attention. The way you fund your police department in a, in a jurisdiction can actually um, exacerbate uh, the conditions of, of uh, the, the population that's being served. If you're, if you're using tickets and citations and, and all of these things, we're learning about, uh, about the role that evictions play in, in destabilizing families. And certainly the, that this, in, this incarceral state has done the same thing. It destabilizes families. We understand that if you're taking, you know, you know, 2,000, 3,000 young men off the streets of 53206 and putting them in prison or jail for a while and then kicking them right back out without really having changed the conditions of the neighborhood they're going back into or the conditions that led them there in the first place. Well, then all we do is just keep, you know, it, it creates more victims, it creates more cycles.